Hi, my name is Dan Morgret, and today I'm going to show you how to use process costing. So have you ever wondered how pop or chocolate chip cookies are created? There's always a process that goes through creating these products. So in accounting, we have to track these processes until we get to the final product. So for example, the materials and the labor that go into creating an orange crush or a Chips Ahoy cookie. And in accounting, we use process costing to assign these costs to the units dealing with similar products. So when you're creating the pop or the chocolate chip cookies, you always create it in a batch and then separate it into its final product. So that's basically the primary time when you use process costing. Now one way to standardize the units for process costing is equivalent units. And these are this is the amount of work done by the percentage of possible completed units. This is basically a way of standardizing everything and so the math is easier to be done afterwards. Now I'm going to show you the five steps of process costing. So in process costing, there is four main steps that you need to follow. The first step is to summarize the flow of physical units. The second step is to compute the output in equivalent units. The third step is to summarize the total cost. And the last step is to compute the cost per equivalent unit. So in this very basic exercise over here, I'm going to run through this again. So the first step is to summarize the flow of physical units. And when you're doing process costing, you have to do it for both the materials and the conversion costs, which is kind of confusing, but it's pretty straightforward still. So for direct materials, the units that we have are the equivalent units completed and the works in progress units ending. So there are these two units, so it's 150. So we're gonna put it right here, 150. And we're gonna add those up for step two. For conversion costs, what we need to do is since it says right here that there are 75% of the costs are for conversion costs, we have to take this number and multiply it by 75%. So the two units that we will need for conversion costs are the equivalent units completed right here, which is 100, so I'm gonna write that down right here. It's still the same for both. And then for works in progress ending, it's just this number multiplied by 75%, which is 37.5, and we're gonna add those up for step two. So all step two is is to add these numbers up. So for direct materials, it is 100 plus 50, so that is 150. You don't need to kick your shoe off for that. And then for conversion costs, it is 100 plus 37.5, which is 137.5. And we, that is all we need for equivalent units. So the third step is to summarize the total costs. The nice thing about this chart is that the costs are very descriptive. So what we will need for direct materials says materials, and what we need for conversion costs says conversion costs. So for direct materials, we will need the beginning works in progress, which is $500, and the cost added, which is $100. So 500, 100, add them up, is equal to 600, okay? Next, we will have to do the same thing, but with conversion costs. So 50 and 20. So we will add those up. And get 70. Okay. The last step we have to do is to compute cost per equivalent unit. So what we will do is we will take the 600 right here for direct materials and divide it by 150. So 600 divided by 150, which equals $4 per equivalent unit. We will do the same thing over here with 70 divided by 137.5. So 70 divided by 130 and a half is equal to 0 0.51, so or 51 cents per equivalent unit. 
So basically what this is telling us is that for direct materials, the average variable cost is $4 per equivalent unit produced. And for conversion costs, it's approximately 51 cents per equivalent unit produced. So that is how you do process costing. I hope everyone enjoyed. Thank you.